-hmm. All right, so once again, I would love to welcome all of you guys today for our session, um, which is communication media and creative arts. Uh, we have a special guest today from three universities um, in UK, so please stay tuned with us, um, stay later for Q&As. It will be really interested today to listen about this topic. And who I am, I'm Sandra, I'm working with SIUK Poland. We just recently opened up um, an office in Warsaw. We are based in city center, so it's very easy to get to us. And with that, uh, let me show you guys uh, a short, just, you know, a short information about who we are and what we do. So as you can see, today's webinar, it's communication and media plus um, creative art and design. Um, and to go next, um, so SIUK. SIUK, it's a company that's been known for quite a lot of time now. Uh, it's been around 15 years, as I remember good. Um, and it started by those two gentlemen, uh, Dwayne and Aryan, who opened first office in Asia, um, in Japan. And they decided that they want to help out um, Asian kids um, apply to universities in UK, uh, because back then it was really difficult to do an application by itself. Um, so they, they started this consulting, um, you know, consulting company back then as a one office. Uh, but now these days, it's almost um, hundreds of offices around the globe. We have we are located in 35 countries currently, and just right now open in one more in Warsaw. And they're not planning to stop uh, because every kid, every student in every part of the globe needs help with consulting and choosing their best university and best courses uh, poss that, that can possibly be there. Um, so that's why SIUK it's for, and this is why we are here for. So what we're so it's brand new, uh, but in terms of experience and what we do, and we are not new to that. We are very well experienced. Um, I myself have experience of six years working in uh, this industry, so I really do know what I'm doing and I know all those universities in UK um, and and if you would really love to contact me and talk to me about you know any type of uh, process application or issues or financing whatever it is please just take a quick picture of my email you have my phone number as well as our address as you can see we are in the city center which is very easy to get to us um, as well as our social media please, please do follow us because we have uh, really nice events and nice things we actually uh, post there. So you can just read about or you can meet us as well. So this is it from me, from SIUK. And we, you know, it's not about us today. It's about topic and our guests who are here today with us. And please, guys, I would love to introduce to you our first um, speaker, which is Aaron uh, from Leeds Bucket University. Aaron, can you tell us uh, a little bit about you, about your university, and the topic that we are here today for? Yeah, of course. Thank you very much, Sander, for that introduction. And it's very nice to be here today. So thank you very much for having me, everyone. Um, and thanks for joining as well. It's it's really great to see so many people interested in, in studying in the UK. Um, Sandra, if you could just let me know, can you see my presentation screen? Yeah. If I... Oh, but with me a second. Yeah, it's all good. Sorry, is that still okay? Yeah. yeah. My split screen is just gonna a bit funny. Okay. Yeah, so like Sandra is saying, my um the represent the university I'm here to represent today is Leeds Beckett University, uh, based in the UK, obviously. My name is Aaron Taylor. I'm the International Development Officer for North America and Europe here at the university. You're more than welcome to contact me. Um and use me as, as a kind of a, a focal point to uh, ask any questions. If you're ever visiting in the area, I would like to arrange a meetup or to um, to do a campus tour, then I'm more than happy to help with that as well. 
you can contact me using the email address below um, or my mobile number as well if you like if you scan that qr codes then that'll take you straight to whatsapp and you can just send me a whatsapp message too so various ways you can contact me um, if you like and yeah like i say if any sort of questions then definitely just just get in touch with myself or uh, or, or sandra and the siuk team as on so hopefully you have heard of Leeds, the city before, if you're interested in studying in the UK. Um, if not, it's kind of in the middle of, uh, in between, well, we say in between Edinburgh and London, and very central, um, essentially located within England itself, um, but more towards the north of England, not too far from other major cities, such as Manchester, Liverpool and Sheffield, kind of in that, in that region there. Um, Leeds has its own regional airport, which is Leeds Bradford Airport, and it's very close to some other international airports as well, such as Manchester. Um, with it being so centrally located, it's very, it's very well connected to the rest of the UK and Europe as well. So you've got major train lines that run right through Leeds. Like I say, there's the airports that are very close by as well. It's very easy, very easy to, to get around. It's quite a small city to, to be able to get around as well. It's a very popular student city. So we actually have five universities within the city and that equates to somewhere between 60 and 70,000 students um, in the city during term time. So that means it's incredibly diverse. We are home to more than 100 different nationalities. So you're definitely walking down walking down the street, you'll hear lots of different accents, um, different regional dialects, different languages. So that's really, really nice to hear. Um, and I think the, the the kind of my my UK colleagues on the call will probably um, agree with me as well. The Leeds is based within the county that's that's called Yorkshire, and it's kind of well known for being very friendly uh, and welcoming, and, and having that sort of um, that that very welcoming community, which you would definitely notice if if you were to visit the area one day. So some things that you may not know about Leeds. It's a similar population to Krakow, so just under 800,000 people. That was last recorded uh, last year. It's actually the third most populated city in the UK after both London and Birmingham. It's the largest financial and legal district outside of London. Um, and it has a Premier League football team, which is Leeds United Football Club. Uh, football club um, and Yorkshire villages are often voted voted some of the best places to to live in in England and the UK as well. And you can you can kind of see why if you if you look at the the bottom right hand um, image there. There's lots of countryside just on the doorstep. Um, so even though it is one of the one of the biggest cities in the UK, then it's only around about a 15 minute drive just outside of the city centre. And then you'll get to some of these uh, very picturesque very English looking idyllic towns and, and the countryside. So lovely if, if, you, if you're a fan of walking. So just a little bit more about Leeds Beckett University itself. We are with us the second largest university in Leeds. So we had that, that means that we have, we have 24,000 students that are on campus and then 28,000 students, including the overseas students. So that's students that are based at some of our partner universities overseas and some that study online as well. And we have um, over one, one and a half thousand international students at the moment. It's really big on the university's agenda currently to increase that number. Uh, the, uh, the, the agendas is definitely to try and focus on the increasing the number of, of international students, which is, which is really, great if, really great if you are an international student and hopefully get more towards that 10% mark. So it's, uh, it's a good time to be an international student at the university, definitely. Um, our his history stretches back almost 200 years. The Headingley campus was used as a hospital during World War One and Two, which is quite a cool fact. And um, this building that's in the image on the left of the, of the text there, that's actually the hospital that, that was used. Um, so we have a mix of historical and modern teaching buildings and split across two campuses, which I'll, I'll get to on the next slide. This is very important. We, we actually have a, a vocational style of teaching as opposed to a research based teaching method. So that means that there are lots of placement years available. You will find that it's a bit more practical based learning and that's reflected in the, the subjects that we do offer at the university too. And because of that, many of the courses are accredited by professional bodies because you get a certain number of um, work placement hours to contribute to your career and, and that kind of thing as well. So. Uh, because of that, we have 90% of all the, the graduates are in work for the study within, the, within 15 months of graduating. Uh, we have 85% uh, of students are satisfied with their course. Um, and we've recently awarded five stars in QS rankings, including five stars for internationalization 
as well. So like I was saying, we're split across two campuses. So we have one campus that's based just on the outskirts of the city centre, which is called Headingley. This is set in 94 acres of parkland. It's only around a 10, 15 minute bus journey to the centre and those buses are very regular too. This is actually home to our brand new 45 million pound Carnegie School of Sport, which is the one that's behind me, if, the, if you can see that one. Um, this is also where the sports facilities are. Uh, so that includes pitches, that's football pitches, rugby pitches, hockey pitches. Uh, the swimming pool is based here, inside and outside tennis courts and an outdoor running track as well. So if you are a sports fan and you would like to take part in some of the sports, um, be, be part of the sports teams alongside your studies, you can definitely do that. And that's the campus where you would do the majority of your training. And secondly, we have our city campus, which is based in the heart of the city centre. This is on the doorstep there to, on the doorstep of hundreds, hundreds of businesses and organisations that offer work placements and employment opportunities to students. And this picture itself is the new, brand new £80 million building for the School of Arts with new state-of-the-art creative spaces, um, which is, well, I'll get onto that a little bit later on, as I know the, the idea of what we're going to be talking about today is creative arts. So this is a brief overview of the subjects that we do offer. And then what I would highly recommend is visiting our website and then which is leadsbeckett.ac.uk forward slash subjects. If you go if you go onto that, that will help you narrow your search down. Um, and then you'll be able to see which actual bachelor's and post um, undergraduate and postgraduate degrees, so bachelor's and master's degrees that we do offer within these particular, particular subject areas. So um, there are more than 300 courses to choose from. So there are, it's, it's definitely worth taking your time to have a look through those on the website. And what I would highly recommend is um, if you take a look further down, sc scroll a bit further down on one of those particular programs that you're interested in, and you can find out the, the teaching methods and all of the classes that are included within that particular course as well. So you'll be able to see what you would study in year one, year two and year three. So we, we call these different classes modules in the UK. You'll be able to see a full breakdown of all of those. But what we're going to be focusing on today is mainly communications and media and then also creative arts, which I'll come on to in a second. So these are the courses that we offer based around communications and media. So you, as you can see there, there's things like creative writing, these, I've just taken the bachelor's programs for now, but um, if, you, if you were to hop onto the website, then you'll see the, the master's programs that we do offer in this area too. So like I was saying, we have creative writing, media communication cultures, there's things like journalism, public, public relations, and we have a brand new um, sports journalism course, which is uh, which um, it's quite a, a personal appeal to me at the moment because I'm working quite closely with that with that particular um, school doing something with with those guys but that's brand new for 2021 as well the this particular area itself and this school the majority of those programs will be based actually within the business school um, so there are lots of facilities actual actual specialist facilities to create multimedia news content including tv and radio studios and a dedicated newsroom that's housed within this particular school we have over 25 years of teaching public relations. Um, graduates are employed at high profile companies and consultancies in the UK and overseas, including Global Communications Network, Grayling, British Airways, Disney, O2 and Mercedes Benz, uh, those kind of companies. 100% of the BA Honours Journalism students were satisfied with the course. 100% of students agreed that staff are good at explaining things. And for the public relations and brand communication course, 85% went on to work and or further study within the first 15 months after graduating as well. Moving on to the creative arts. So these courses, we probably have a, a few more courses available within this particular area, and those can be broken down into subcategories as well. So you have things like broadcast and creative media technologies. We have filmmaking. We have a, a very big filmmaking school, actually. Um, there's various music programs that you could study, varying from production, audio engineering, music technology, music, music industries as well. So there's lots of different ones to choose from there. We have dance, performing arts, theatre performance, and there's also things like fashion, fashion marketing, uh, fine arts, graphic design that are all loosely related to each other as well. 
So some interesting facts about these particular programs. One of the senior, lect senior lecturers that's on, I think it's audi the audio engineering program, uh, Ken Scott has co-produced some albums with the likes of David Bowie, uh, worked with the Beatles as the sound engineer on their albums, Magical Mystery Tour and the White Album as well. Within the Northern Film School, approximately 200 films are made every single year, um, and they've been teaching film over the past 25 years as well. Shortlisted for awards such as Global Fine Art Awards, Paul Hamlin Visual Awards, um, things like that. And the Leeds School of Arts students themselves have an end of year show each, each year, um, and that gives the students a chance to show off their own exhibitions and the work that they've been working on for the past couple of years. 100% of the dance students are satisfied with their course. 90% of students um, from this particular school are in work for the study within 15 months of graduating. And we have lots of professional accredited courses, uh, including joint audio media education support as well. But the, the real star of the show, um, and we're just gonna fly through a couple of different images here of, of, this, of the brand new building is, is, is this particular one. And it's, and it's, it's the Creative Arts Building, which is um, 80 million pounds worth of investment and it opened this year. So it's, it's quite an exciting time um, to be an art student. And I've personally been in this building and it's, it's very, very impressive. Um, related to the filmmaking program, we have brand new um, Black Box Studios. We have green screens. There's a 220 seat Dolby Atmos movie cinema and the students can um, show their own work here. So with those end of year shows that I was talking about, you would um, filmmaker studios would, would show their own work here, but then also there's going to be some, some of the Hollywood um, films will, will be shown here soon as well. Uh, in terms of music, we have things like, and you, you can book these as a student, just show your student card and just hop online and be able to book these studios. Um, some of these, for example, are the large ensemble room. Uh, we have the mastering room, have things like an anechoic chamber. Um, for performing arts, we have performing arts studios, including the 180 seat performance theater. And it has some nice views of Leeds as well from the roof terrace. Um, so yeah, that's kind of the, a brief um, overview of what those particular courses uh, do offer. And like I say, definitely check out the website for a bit more information and to, and to go into that level of detail uh, to be able to pick the course that's going to be right for you. In terms of cost, our tuition fees for undergraduate, this is for, for EU students, uh, they are for September 22 are £14,000 per year um, for undergraduate, for postgraduate, most courses are £15,000 per year. Now, most students will qualify for the, the EU scholarships, and those are for, for undergraduate students are £1,000 per year. For undergraduate programmes, it tends to be three years, so that's £3,000 across the, the length of the degree. For postgraduate, it's up to £4,000 uh, for the first year only. If you study both an undergraduate and postgraduate programme, then you qualify for the alumni discount, which is 10% off your postgraduate fees. And there's lots more information about living costs. If you if you were to head over to the to our website, and Sandra is saying she'll she'll send around this presentation afterwards, um, and you can click on that link and definitely check out that website where it'll give you a comparison of um, how much things like accommodation will cost you, how much it is to live in Leeds, how much it, it will cost to live in Leeds. Leeds is one of the most affordable student cities as well. I would say because of the fact that it does have so many students in there. So it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a brilliant place to, to be a student. Um, and if you wanna check out more information specific to Polish students, Polish entry requirements and things like that, then definitely check out leadsbeckett.ac.uk forward slash Poland for a bit more information on that. So thank you very much for listening. Um, just, I'll just leave you with uh, our social media channels. Um, I'd highly recommend checking these out too. It's a really good way. These are actually a lot of the things that are on YouTube are uh, vlogs that have been recorded from students themselves. So it's a really nice way to be able to, to get a feel for what it's like to be a student at Leeds Beckett University. And they'll talk about things like what I, what I cooked this weekend on a budget, um, what to do in Leeds at the weekend and that kind of thing. So if you're interested in, in trying to learn more about the university, then the social media channels are always a good place to start as well. So on that note, I'll hand back over to Sandra, if that's all right, Sandra. Thank you so much, Aaron. Um, it was really great presentation. Um, and yes, as, as um, you said, um, social media these days, it's very powerful tool um, in the situation of the whole pandemic as well. 
um, also helped many people to survive um, throughout the social media. Um, so yes, guys, please do visit our uh, YouTube channels, visit um, Instagram profiles, um, visit those Facebook um, profiles as well, because university also have their own webinars, their own um, sessions online and, and many different interesting things that you can um, register. Um, so yes, this is a good uh, ending uh, with, with, um, with further ado, I would love to you guys um, introduce a university, only university uh, in London that we have tonight. And we would love to hear a little bit more about London. What's, what's about that London today and how London looks like in terms of creative arts and communication media. Absolutely. Thank you again, Sandra, for the invite. And it's lovely to see everyone here. Let me just share the screen. Sure it works on the first go. Is that on? Yep, lovely. All right. Um, so, hi, my name is Charlotte Stallman, and I am the EU Student Recruitment Officer at Goldsmith. So, what that means is that I am the first point of contact for EU students, and I'm happy to be contacted with any question that you may have. My email address is on the first page there, and as it's being shared, I won't rush for you to um, write it down. So a little bit of history about Goldsmiths. Uh, we were founded in 1891. Um, before this, and you'll see some of the photos here that are hinting at it, um, main building of our university actually used to be the Royal Naval School. And then in 1891, it was transformed into a local community college, which focused on art, uh, media, and well, media as it was, art and design, though, predominantly. And uh, this was in 1891. And then in 1904, we joined the Universities of London group, uh, which is a group of 17 institutions um, across the city. And what that means is actually you can use the facilities across these different institutions. So we partner with the likes of uh, Royal Holloway, SOAS, um, UCL, there's lots of them. Um, and that means you've got access to lots of great facilities and lots of great libraries as well. Um, the photo on the screen right now is actually what the campus currently looks like. And as you can see, that old building is the old Naval School. Um, this is a bit of an overview of the city. I'm sure if you have been to London, most people have been to London, at least on a quick holiday. Um, everything within the orange uh, line on the screen is our campus. So we're quite rare for central London. We do have a one campus site, so everything is taught on the campus. Um, and in the background, you can just see some key points of the city. So you can see how close we are to the city centre, but we're not quite in there. Now, the area that the university is located in is South East London. And specifically, we are located in New Cross, which is based in Lewisham, uh, but it's easily accessible for Deptford and Broccoli as well. And East London is known as quite an arty, quirky place. You can get some of the best food in London around there and it's pretty cheap to um, stay compared to the rest of central London. And so these photos are just from around the campus. Um, there's lots of cafes, there's lots of bars, restaurants, there's a theatre, uh, there's cinemas, so there's lots to do around the campus as well as traveling into the city. Here's an overview of where the university is situated in London. So again, if you've been, this is a great point of reference. So we're obviously in bright orange, there's our campus. We are right in between two different uh, local tube stations. Uh, you've got New Cross Gate and New Cross. Um, you can get to London Bridge um, in about 10 minutes on the train. Um, and there you can see the different timings. I personally think those timings are wrong, but I think I do something called the London walk, which means that you power walk in between places. So that's for a nice brisk, um, a slow walk in between places. Um, it's easily accessible to most of the airports. So to Heathrow, it's an hour and 15, to Gatwick, it's 45 uh, five minutes. And this is all done by public transport. So it's really easy. Now, because you're in London, you do get a lot of amazing opportunities while studying there. Um, so we, in, in most of the programmes that we offer, we do try to integrate the city within that, whether that's to be for placement or um, field trips. For example, the uh, undergraduate design uh, programme that integrates actually a visit to the Victoria and Albert Museum, which is a fantastic uh, design museum. 
And one of the first assignments of students when they arrive at Goldsmiths is to fit it in within the collection of which is displayed at the Victoria and Albert Museum at that time. So everyone's work is unique. Um, and also, like I said, placements, um, a lot of them do have integrated placements or where you can gain credits for doing work in the summer or throughout part of your term. This is something that's extremely important as part of your degree because you don't just learn, you apply what you learn. So you're ready to, as soon as you graduate, get out there and start working. What's also great about London is there's always something to do. Uh, whether you like museums, whether you like um, concerts, musical theatre, really there's anything and it might be visiting to London as well if there's something that you want to do since it is such a big city centre. A bit about the university um, and our people. So we have just over 10,000 students. A uh, majority of these are undergraduate um, and so it splits about 60-40. And we have over 130 different countries represented on campus, so it's extremely diverse, but that accurately represents London, which is a melting pot of languages and culture, which is what makes it an amazing city. Um, rather interestingly, 22% of our students, which are undergraduate, are identified um, identify as mature, which means that they entered university over the age of 21, but it's never too late to start an undergraduate degree. 47% um, of our students identify as black or as a person of colour and 21% of our students have declared a disability, whether this is a visible or invisible disability. So the university, uh, we're making some changes for the future. Um, one of the things that we are uh, looking at is being more environmentally sustainable and we have implemented our Green New Deal. Uh, which means we're going to try to be carbon neutral by 20, uh, 2025. So what we've done is we've added many new recycling points. Uh, we've got green energy on campus, so we've got solar energy. Um, and uh, we've opened vegetation plots on campus that students can use. And uh, we've also got a new bike scheme so we can help you know, lend you the money if you can't afford a bike at the time that you want to purchase one. And we've got loads of new bike spots on campus so they're safe and secure. Uh, next, we're focusing on decolonizing the curriculum and we are trying to implement a Liberate Our Library initiative. So we're going to focus on intersectional approaches to divers diversifying our library collections and the reading lists which are offered as part of our degrees. Next, we're focusing on interdisciplinary approaches. So just even if you decide to do, uh, let's say, design, um, you can take classes um, or modules, as we would call them, from different departments so that you can actually, you're not just focused on one thing, this is up to you to choose. You could pick from history, you could pick from politics or sociology, anthropology, any one of those areas. And lastly, we're going to carry on with our groundbreaking research. Um, and this is not just from our faculty, but this is also from our students. So we like to try and mesh two together and see where that's going to take us. So a bit about the courses that we offer. Um, we have five different departments and this uh, webinar will focus on three of the departments that we have. Uh, the first two are Department of Art and Department of Design. Um, you can see here, I'm not gonna read off uh, the programs, you can read them. And it's always best to check the website as well because things do change, some might not be offered. Um, but importantly, Goldsmiths is actually very well known for its courses in arts and design. That's where our history stands. Most recently, we've been, um, we were ranked ninth in the UK uh, for art and design with the uh, Complete Universities Guide. And we were ranked third in the UK for art from the Guardian University rankings and fourth for design and crafts. Uh, the building you can see on the screen there is our Ben Pinlow building, and that is where our art students have their own studios. So what's quite unique about us, every single student who enters a art or design program automatically get allocated their own studio space. So this is uh, quite a large table, and it's normally a space shared between two or three students, and they might be from a different program. They might be from a different year, so we mix undergraduates and postgraduates to encourage working together and utilizing the people around you to help problem solve. But this is a place where you can practice all through the evening, where you can create your projects for any of your assignments throughout the year. 
next is our definitely biggest um, department that we have at the university, which is our Department of Media, Communications and Cultural Studies. There's a lot of degrees that I can show you in here, and I'm not going to read them out. I think it's best for you just to have a look at them. Um, but we do have the obvious, the typical ones, so journalism, media and communications. And as you can see, you can combine quite a few of the um, different specialisms. On screen is the Professor at Stuart Hall building, which is where our media and communications is taught. And it's just going to cycle through a couple of photos for you to see. Now, within this building is where our specialist facilities are for our media and communications. So there are um, dark rooms, there are editing suites, uh, we have a radio station, filming studios, green screens, blue screens, there's virtual reality suites, um, there's sound suites for your editing as well. Um, and last photo there is one of our large lecture theatres, which is what we use when we have guests come to visit to do um, guest lectures. Here's some of the postgraduate course we offer. So like I said, there's quite a lot of them available and these get very specific. Um, and um, yeah, and these can be also combined in slight ways. So it's really, it's tailored to what your interests are and what you are looking for. Uh, again, we offer the very typical ones, filmmaking, uh, television journalism, script writing, but also we have some unique ones to offer. So um, we have our gender, media and culture. Uh, the children's literature one is quite interesting as well. And um, the photography and the image and electronic arts is a really interesting one. Just on the matter of entry requirements. So uh, we accept quite a lot of international qualifications. Um, on here in this presentation, I put the Polish Matura and the International Baccalaureate for undergraduates. Uh, for postgraduates, it's the same, we accept many from all around the world. Best place to look though is on our website in our um, specific country pages. But let's go over there. So the Polish Matura will accept with a minimum of two subjects at extended level. And there's the, um, sorry, pardon the uh, error on there. It says Italian equivalent, you should say Polish equivalent. Uh, but there are the grades equivalent. But again, best to check the individual course page that you're interested in. Next as well for international baccalaureate. So most of our undergraduate programs require 33 points overall with um, at least three taken at a higher level with a score of six, five and five. Um, now some different degrees have different entry requirements obviously and also for our art and design programs, you will need to submit a portfolio to show your work. Um, we do have portfolio guidance on our website and uh, we will hold portfolio guidance online sessions as well for people to attend if they're not sure how to put together a portfolio. Um, you also may need to do an interview. Um, this would happen online if you are located abroad, unless you wanted specifically to come to the campus to see the campus and do an interview in person. This also is subject to COVID guidance. Alongside the regular entry requirement, you also need to do English language requirements. Uh, so they're on the screen there. Uh, we do not accept the Polish Matura for English. So if you aren't doing IB or another English equivalent qualification such as A-levels, then you'll have to do an IELTS test for your English. Um, those scores are again on our website. Now, funding information, this varies per course. Um, so it's check the individual course page, but uh, for international students, which now obviously includes our European students, uh, these are anywhere between 17,000 to 23,870 for our undergraduate programmes. And for our postgraduate, anywhere between 11,000 up to almost 25,000. Now, you may be able to claim UK home fees, but this is subject to uh, your passport, your background information. So I can't advise on individual uh, cases, unfortunately. Then check the individual course page for the correct and upstate information. Scholarships, they're very important to help international students. We have a couple of different um, scholarships available. The big one is our Goldsmiths International Scholarship. Applications will open in January for that for next year. And you can get anywhere between 2,000 to 5,000 pounds per year um, for undergraduate degrees. Um, and there are some available for postgraduate degrees as well, but there are not as many. Uh, we also have uh, performance scholarships and there are uh, department specific scholarships. They change frequently, so best to check on our finance section of our website to see what's available pending on the programme. 
And finally, just a bit about accommodation that's available. So all of our accommodation is within walking, well, most of our accommodation is within walking distance of the campus, or if not, on the campus. So there's a specific called residence called Loring Hall, uh, which I always recommend for first year students. It's right next to the campus, right next to the tube station, so it's a great location to be in for your first year. Um, the prices range from 180 to 320 pounds a week. Um, we've got one, over 1,200 rooms. International first year undergraduate students get priority of um, getting accommodation if you apply by a certain date in June. And this is because we know you're traveling the furthest and we want you to have a really good base in London. Um, most are 40 or 42 week contracts that runs in line with the programs and 88% uh, are on suite, meaning you have your own bathroom, but there are some with shared, um, but there's normally at least two shared bathrooms in the flat if it is a shared situation. Um, they are all usually mixed gender. And what it is, is normally you have a cluster of flats, you all have your own individual room and then you share a kitchen and it's your responsibility to work out who cleans the kitchen when. Uh, you can't apply for your accommodation until you have an offer to stay, uh, offer to study at Goldsmith. That was a really quick overview of Goldsmiths University. I'm happy to answer any questions later on and also a later date. Um, if you're ever in London, you want to see the campus, please drop me an email. I'm happy to show you around. And um, yeah, if you're ever on holiday and you just want to quick pop by, ask a question, you're more than welcome to. Uh, if you scan the QR page on the screen, uh, you can sign up to hear more from Goldsmiths directly. And also um, there's lots of key information with all the links to take you to the right places. This will be sent around again, so you'll have it later to scan. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, um, Charlotte. It was uh, really interested, and um, it's it's pretty nice to know that London. It's not only about business and management; that it has some other courses that are good at. Um, and and it's really good to know that Goldsmith. It's about art, and and it spends so yeah. much attention and and that studio um idea for students is just incredible i mean if you want to be an artist you need that space to create yeah. art and the I collaboration is really yeah. interesting to see between the students it's a really interesting atmosphere yeah i mean i think it's the greatest thing you guys did so well done well done so please stay stay for the q and a's um and I would love to um, introduce our um, last speaker tonight um, from University of Queen Margaret. Um, Allingen, if you can um, let us know what's, what's up with Queen Margaret and what are some interesting facts about communication, media, and um, creative arts with you guys. Of course, thank you. Um, thank you, Sandra. Um, I will briefly talk about Queen Margaret University in Edinburgh. Um, I'll share my screen now and I've got the full screen. So can you guys all see? Okay, perfect. Um, this is a very short and brief presentation because um, UK University in a way is very similar. So you already know a lot about it. So I'll keep this short. So you have the opportunity to ask all of us questions later. Um, we are in Edinburgh and um, it's the festival cultural capital of this country. Um, we have Edinburgh Fringe every year, as you might have heard of. Um, we are in Scotland, so we're not in England, so that's quite important. I will talk about a difference a bit further. If you have been to Edinburgh before, you might recognise this photo there. You can see Princess Street, um, Edinburgh Castle, et cetera, et cetera. So that's an absolutely beautiful place. It's also a, a tourist attraction, actually. A lot of people travel from um, all around Europe or the world come here for the summer. And I'm sure Charlotte and, and, and Sandra and Aaron might have been there and themselves as well. And they can tell you how beautiful this place is. Um, that's the photo on the right is Edinburgh Fringe. We also call it Edinburgh Festival. Uh, every year it takes place for about a month. And we have a course just to teach you how to operate in that. So we'll talk about it in a bit later. So we are a lot smaller university. About, we have about over 4,000 students, um, international students. Uh, it's about 1,242 up to last year. So uh, uh, it's a postmodern university after 1992. Um, so I'll move on to show you some stats of the university, which is quite important because we are the top 20 in the UK for communication and media. Um, we are the first amongst UK university for overall student satisfaction rates in social science. 
um, we are top three among Scottish universities for learning community as well. So these are some stats I can share with Sandra and she will be able to share it with you guys. Um, talking about studying in Scotland, um, there is a difference in terms of undergraduate studies. So in England, you study three years for your, in England and Wales, you study three years for your undergraduate course. Um, in Scotland, you do four years. So that's a big difference. If you choose to finish in year three, uh, after year three, you will be able to get an ordinary degree. Um, if you want to get an honours degree, you have to complete year four. And that's the main difference. That, that's how you remember that. Also, if you study in Scotland, um, say from um, psychology, but you don't like it, you can choose to have, say, history as an option. And then you are able to graduate with history degree, which is something very different from what you apply with. That's a flexibility in the system, which is different from English universities. So that's the reason you have um, four years instead of three years. So that's something that's quite um, Maybe it'd be different for you to remember, but if you have questions, feel free to ask me after the presentation. I can talk about it in greater details with you. So just remember, you need to spend four years to get an honours degree in Scotland uh, in comparison to three years in England. Now, we have a few uh, communication media and creative arts and design courses. On the left-hand side is some highlights of the uh, undergraduate courses. On the right-hand side is some uh, postgraduate courses. And on these slides, there is um, Arts Festival in Cultural Management, which is our unique course. And uh, I don't think there's lots of units in the UK actually offer this Arts Festival Cultural Management course. As a postgraduate talk course, it's one year. I will talk about it in more details later. Um, we have made a big change since we left the EU. Um, a lot of undergraduate courses I've listed on this page um, been reduced. Uh, fee be reduced by 50%. So it's only 7,000 pounds each year tuition fee instead of 15,000. So um, lots of Scottish universities made changes since we left the UK because it used to be um, uh, European students and Scottish students pay not a lot for their undergraduate studies and um, uh, postgraduate uh, international students pay double. So uh, since we left the EU, we just draw a line, it's very simple. Everybody pays the same 7,000 pounds undergraduate student fee each year. Obviously it goes up with inflation, but overall it's about 7,000. So um, if you're not interested in, if you want to find out other courses, uh, we have quite a lot on the website. Uh, if you want to speak to me about the 7,000 course, 7,000 pounds courses, feel free to drop me a message after this. Now, uh, I talk about um, arts festival and cultural management at the university. Um, Edinburgh Fringe takes place every year, and um, this is a course we unique, uh, very, very unique to, um, to us, and then we offer that as a part of the business management course, and it's about how to operate and organize the art organization, how to run a, a festival event. Um, this is quite different, um, but it's a fun subject to study. You will get to study with quite a lot of business students, um, share the same modules, etc. but you will get to get out of the classroom to meet new people, to gain experience. Um, I share this with you. Uh, it's a one year taught um, postgraduate talk course. So um, just like any other postgraduate studies you will do. Um, you will actually, within this year, you will have, actually have industry-based learning, including lots of field trips, local internship opportunities. So that's quite unusual for one year taught postgraduate courses. You get to learn a lot better and you get to help in um, Edinburgh Fringe as well. So on the right hand side, you can see the fireworks at Edinburgh Military Tattoo at Edinburgh Castle. Um, and the one below is some um, um, show that you'll see in Edinburgh Fringe show as well. That's actually quite a good subject study. Um, it's for students who has creativity, but they also want to study a lot of business modules to pick. Um, so being Edinburgh, we have the perfect opportunity for you if you want to choose that course. Um, briefly talk about English requirement, that information is on the website, but um, we take all kinds of eyes, eyes in the indicator, etc. And you can have a look at that later if you prefer. Um, accommodations, um, I just again, I would like to emphasize this is a very um, good value education place. So um, the university offers um, quite good values um, place to live as well. So um, accommodation fees on that is on there. So in comparison, you can see um, the price is different from some other places you all know. Um, 
accommodation information is you will need to be able to get an offer first before you apply to our um, university accommodation, just like any other university you spoke to. And in terms of scholarship, we have quite a few university scholarship. One of them is the um, uh, German International Scholarship. You will be able to apply after you have the um, offer from us. Now, the Scottish government also offers so tight scholarship, which is £8,000, which is quite a lot of money. So um, you'll be able to, um, now EU students be added to the list as well now. So if you're from Poland, you will be able to apply to our so tight European scholarship of £8,000 as well, which I think is actually great. Um, the university policy is you can apply to as many as possible, if you like, but you can only accept one at the end. So you, obviously you just picked up the highest amount to accept. So that's certainly not a problem. So once you get an offer from us on the offer, there's a hyperlink for you to click on to look into all the scholarship you can apply. You can um, choose one or choose them all to apply and then the, the admission team will get back to you. So that's something we recommend you to do. Now, that's my contact information. Uh, obviously, you can certainly get in touch with me by email or email admission and copy me in or WhatsApp me. But what I'd like to say is we have been working with SIUK in many countries for many, many years. Um, they are very professional and they are one of the trustworthy partners of us. So if you like to get in touch with myself or Sandra, um, you're very welcome to. If you want to start an initial communication, uh, communication with Sandra, she will pass on your, your inquiry to me so we can work together to help you. And they have helped many, many students in the past and they are very experienced. So um, we're looking forward to help you. And um, there we are. Thank you. Thank you so much for those nice words. Um, yeah, so uh, anytime guys you need, uh, you know, a, a detailed answer or you want to know more about this particular university that we had today, um, please do email me. Um, you can email me in Polish. I can always help you to translate. Uh, we are here to help each other. Um, as the SIUK, we've known so many universities for past years, and we are really good known uh, in terms of um, experience. So uh, please do not hesitate to ask questions um, and actual uh, as asking questions right now, we have the time to ask questions. Um, I would love to thank you guys for our, for your presentation. They were all great. Uh, we've learned so much. Thank you for that. And with with that, do any one of the guys um, that are here today, which is you guys, students um, that join us today, have any questions to our speakers? Um, any questions regarding university, regarding course? Anything you can ask um, right now, you can just raise your hand and unmute yourself and just answer and ask, um, or you can put it in the chat. Um, whatever you want to do, don't be scared, okay? We're not, bi we not biting. We are on in front of cameras online, so nothing will happen. Um, so anyone brave enough to ask the question? Uh, yes, I have a question. Um, so my question is, is there any difference uh, between, um, well, when a course has in the name something and something, and when a course has in the name something with something, is there any difference or is it just purely a matter of wording? Okay. Uh, you can just jump in, guys, yeah, and answer the question, whichever you guys want to go first. Can I can I ask Anna, thank you for the question. Do you mean uh, you've seen BA and BSc, so it's so Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Science, is that what your question is? That will help us to explain, is that what you meant? Yeah. So if, if that's your question, then Bachelor of Arts is arts-related courses. Is undergraduate course. Um, Bachelor of Science is a science, for example, a chemistry, that's um, science related courses. So that's so, so different. Um, in some ancient universities, those are both undergraduate, of course. In some ancient universities, for example, Edinburgh, Aberdeen, who are not here, um, they will call it MA and they call it Master of Arts, but it's actually undergraduate as well. So, and um, actual course content is different, different subject areas. So, I guess that's that's the easiest way to understand. I hope I answered the question correctly. Uh, yes, thank you. 
Um, my question was a bit about something different. So, for example, if there's a course called Media and English, um, what's the difference between a course called Media and English and Media with English or English with Media? I, say, I think it does depend on <clears throat> sorry in, on the university itself, uh, but I can say for Goldsmiths, if we have a subject and a subject, that means it would be 50-50 on either subject. If it's with, that would predominantly be 75-25. So the, the first subject is the one that's the core one, and then you have the a, a, with additional, but the plus is you split your time evenly between the two subjects. Okay, thank you very much. That's it. That's a really good question. I was, I was just going to jump in there and say um, that to, to, to be able to, to, to differentiate between them, it's a really good idea to, to, to hop onto a university's website because they do have that kind of information on there. And especially if you say, for example, if you're interested in media and English or, or whichever one it was, there's usually a, an example of, of how that is broken down. Um, or if you need anything like a score, a course specification from the um, from the professors, then we, we'd be happy to provide that as well. So, if there's if there's anything like that you need to be able to um, to help paint the picture of how each year would look, then then we can do that for you. But that's that's a really good question. Yeah, thank you, Anna. Um, I see Alexandra, you have a, a hand raised. So um, go ahead, ask your question. Okay, thank you. Is it possible to work at the Goldsmith University campus? Just to check, you mean as a student? Uh, yes. Yes, okay. Uh, yeah, we do have uh, jobs on campus. So I think most institutions in the UK have uh, something like a student ambassador scheme. Um, and that's the easiest way to get involved working at the university. It is highly competitive, but you can go for each year. Um, you get a great salary being a student ambassador as well. So uh, currently our salary is £10.50 an hour, but this actually will be going up next year to almost £13 an hour, uh, which is a very, very good wage. When I was a student ambassador, I got paid £9 an hour. So <laughs> very different, uh, but it'll help with those London living costs. Um, but you don't have to work on campus either. You can work anywhere in London, really. Everywhere is looking to employ students. The one thing to be conscious of, though, now as an EU student is you are restricted based on how many hours you can work in term time because you'll have a visa. So you can only work 20 hours a week in term time. Okay, thank you. Those are very good question, guys. Anyone wants to ask a question before we close our session today? I have one more question. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I have a question to Goldsmith University because it's probably my first choice. Uh, where students who graduate in social studies work after studies? Off the top of my head, uh, just because I have, I've, I've got all the creative design and design stuff in my head at the moment, but it's very this. But for social studies, off the top of my head, a few people go into NGOs. Uh, others go on to further education uh, after um, undergraduate, but most go on to um, NGOs, to any type of charity, and some do get involved with the local council as well because social work um, and so, uh, yeah, social studies is really important actually to the um, local council of Lewisham. Okay, but in London, there is a possibility to find, to find a job uh, in short time from graduation well um yes and no it depends on the person but this is a really good point for me to highlight again another visa thing which is now the post-study work visa which you can stay in the uk for two years after graduating okay. um to work and you don't have as many restrictions as it used to be on the old tier two work visa uh, but it really depends on you. I can't say, yes, you'll get a job. I can't say, no, you won't get a job, but there are always jobs going in London. It's one of the best cities to actually find employment. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wants to, before we, we still got like five more minutes, anyone wants to ask a question? No. 
I just have one more question, guys, uh, about um, the, uh, the, the fees, the financial situation. I know that some of you had scholarships for, um, for the international students, right? I know the EU, it's right now considered an international, but still we call them EU. Um, but we also have some students who um, are studying in Poland um, and they are international students. Um, so they are, for example, from India uh, or Turkey or um, any other parts of the globe, but they are international um, people, but studying in Poland. And they, for example, want to go for postgraduate. Are they for your side of university considered as an international student and they can apply for the international scholarship or they, are, they will be considered as an EU student? I'm happy to jump in first, uh, if that's the case for us as a Scottish University, um, there'll be international students, they can apply to international student scholarship, but um, it's not a huge difference between the EU student scholarship and international scholarship anymore, so in the future we'll just put it all together, because the reason being is um, if they're paying the tuition, same tuition fee to us, we just have you know one standard scholarship for them to apply. Um, I think to go forward, that might be the case. I'm not sure about in England, so they might have slightly different rules in England. Yeah, so for, well, for Leeds, back at university anyway, um, they the EU students are now part of the same group as other overseas students. So it's all the same. Any any overseas fee that you see or any overseas scholarship, then it would all it would all be the same. I think the, there's only one or two countries where they may be eligible for maybe like one thousand pounds more or something like that. I think it's in Southeast Asia, um, but usually it's they they all apply to to, to most most students and most students are eligible. Um, just um, just to clarify, with our scholarships, they it's not a cash amount; it's a it's a tuition fee reduction. So any tuition fees that you do see, you would just minus the the scholarship fee from from the tuition fee and that's the fee that you would pay yeah same for goldsmiths we don't have separate categories uh, or separate scholarships now available for e or international it all just comes under the goldsmiths international scholarship so and that'll be that going forward um yeah trying to get used to it ourselves saying international includes EU not having it as a separate category now so yeah moving forward <laughs> okay thank you yeah because I mean it's really hard right now uh because right now in this situation we not only have you know European student as like um Warsaw or Poland based but we also have you know international students who studies in in Warsaw and they want to go you know, to UK, for example, for postgraduate. So that's why I'll, I kind of want to uh, find out more because we only focus on the EU, EU all the time when the loans were happening. But right now it's totally different situation. So I totally um, forgetting about that, but we'll get used to it. Um, so yeah, thank you so much, guys. Um, thank you for being here, for, for sharing some really important facts about your universities. Um, thank you for your time, and I hope to see you guys um, soon, maybe on webinar again, or maybe just in, in person. And also to you guys who attended today's webinar, thank you for being so, so patient and asking those incredible questions. Um, and I hope to see you for the next webinar as well. So take care, guys. All right, stay safe and have the rest of the, your night actually great and safe. Thank you. Bye. Thanks, Bye -bye, Sandra. Guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.